Hello and welcome. By now, if you've watched all of my videos, you've seen a review on all four of these mounts, if you're so curious. However, there was one commenter who, who asked a question of, hey, how do these reset? As far as you have a scope in there, you, you true it up, you get everything perfect, you take the mount off, you put it back on, will it throw anything off? So I said, you know what? That's a phenomenal question. Let me find out. So in this video, I'm going to do all four back to back to back to back. It's going to be a long video, but I'm going to put in the description below if you want to just skip to how the Spur does or how the American Defense does, you could do that. But I'm going to do the Spur, Geisley, Scalarworks, and the American Defense mount all in a row. So with the Spur, the only thing I didn't do was torque, was retorque down the caps on the scope and then the base to my mount. So the only thing I did with this was unscrew all four screws off, on, off, on three times, re see how it resets. And I did the same with the other three, except with these other three, what I did was I actually set the scope in there and then torqued down the caps so you could see how much movement there is with the reticle when you're torquing down these caps to see exactly how much movement there is. So I went as far as I could on this without making it too crazy. This video is probably gonna be like 25 minutes long. So I, again, I apologize, but this segment's gonna be in every mount and ring review that I do from here on forward. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, we're gonna start with the spur mount and my Steiner P4XI at 16X. Uh, unfortunately, this is as good as it's going to look for this. So I apologize. I have the rings torqued down and I have the base torqued down to the rail at 40 inch pounds. I'm going to take the mount off the rail, put it back on and torque it in sequence again back to 40 inch pounds on the fasteners, which should be more than sufficient on a rail of this type. So I'm going to now unscrew the base and then I'm going to remove it. Alrighty, the scope is off. I'm going to be putting it back on. Make sure it's in the exact same location. And going in location, going with labeled one. I'm going to snug these up before I torque them. One, two, three, four. All right, I'm now gonna to torque these down to 40 inch pounds with number one, number two, number three, and number four. So it looks like our windage might be off 0.1 of a mil to the right. All right, so that's gonna be our baseline. I'm gonna now take this off again. I figure I'll do this three times give you an idea of what it's going to look like after three times. Now this mount is not designed to be taken off quickly or with any sort of reasonable return to zero, but for the price, it should still be precise enough to do so. All right, so I'm back to exactly where I was. I'm going to snug up number one, snugging up number two, snugging up number three. And then lastly, number four. Now I'm going to be torquing them down again. Number one, number two, number three, and lastly, number four. And that looks like it might be low by half a point. Yeah, definitely about half a point. Windage looks very similar. Last time for this scope, for this mount and scope, and then I'm going to be changing it up. So I am unscrewing the mount to the rail for the last time. Taking it off, putting it back on. Get proper location on the rail. Snugging up one. Two, three, and last four. Now I'm torquing them down. One, two, 
three, four. And that looks to be basically in the exact same location. So I'm gonna say that this mount resets itself to zero very well within 0.1 of a mil. All right. I currently have the Geisley Super Precision with an SWFA 16X in there. Now, I do not have the rings torqued down yet. I'm gonna be torquing them down to 15 inch pounds, which should be more than sufficient for a scope like this in a, in a, in a mount like this. But I wanted to film this so you could see just how much the scope is going to shift while I just torque each individual screw down going from corner to corner. So there's two caps with four screws each. I'm going to the rear left. I'm snugging these up. I'm going opposite at a diagonal, snugging that up, going back to the left rear on the rearmost cap, then the front right on the rearmost cap. And that's not even torqued down yet. You can see how much of a shift we already have. Now I'm going to do the same with the front, starting with the farthest screw on the left. Get that close. Rear right. And then rear left. And then front right. Don't mind that. All right. So those are snug, but they're not torqued. I'm gonna get them to about, like I said, 15 inch pounds. It should be pretty standard. I'm gonna be going from the rear, left forward, click, right rear, click, left rear, click, front right, click. Going to the front where the farthest most cap, rear left, click, Front right, click, front left, click, and rear right, click. Now I'm going to retorque the mount screws to the rail at 40 inch pounds, starting at the rear, and then the front. So everything is now fully torqued. I'm gonna set my zero on the SWFA 16X. And it looks like that's gonna be as close as we're gonna get, so take note of that. Yeah, it's a little cockeyed, but that's not really gonna matter. What's gonna matter is the finite crosshair on that very center line. Try to zoom in a little bit more. So, as you can see, we've got a slight gap on top. So, what I'm going to do now is now remove this mount from the rail, completely off. And I'm gonna put it back, make sure I get in the exact location that I removed it from. Push it forward like you would on any normal mount. I'm just gonna snug up the cross bolts. I'm not gonna to torque them down yet. All right, front and rear are snug. I'm gonna to now torque the front. And we're going to torque the rear. And you can clearly see that elevation is about the same, but we have a windage discrepancy of 0.1 of a mil to the right. So let's see if that is something that remains consistent over the next two times. I have removed, or actually I should say I unlocked both locking screws. Remove it completely. I'm now putting it back in place. Again, trying to line it up 100% perfect. All right, it is in location. I'm pushing forward. I am just snugging up the cross bolt screws. Nuts in this case. They're both snug. I'm going to snug up the front again. And then the rear again. And you can see we have a 0.1 mil discrepancy again. Elevation looks pretty pretty consistent, so I'm happy with that. One last time for good luck, I'm going to unlock these mount screw, mount nuts all the way. Remove it completely off the rail, put it back on the rail. I 
I really don't like this rear, this this mount because as nice as those cross bolts, those cross slides are that lock into the Picatinny rail, they're a pain in the butt to get just right. And these nuts do not come back enough to disengage the, cl the clamps from the rail to do it any other way. So the front is snug, the rear is snug. I'm going back to the front to torque it down. There we go, going back to the rear to torque it down. And as you can see, elevation looks fairly consistent, but we are clearly that 0.1 of a mil off to the right again. But that could have just been from when I first set it up. This is why I do it three times in a row. And across the three times that you watched me take this off and put it back, it stayed fairly consistent. So I'm gonna say that the Geisley Super Precision passes as far as its resetability when you remove it from your rail and put it back on. All right, I now have the Shallow Works mount up there with the SWFA 16X. And now we're gonna see how much this scope moves when I torque down the rings on this mount. Now, one thing I really like about this mount is again, how it secures the scope to the mount. Just two screws on the front and rear. I'm going to torque these down to about 15 inch pounds as well. I'm starting with the rear most mount. I'm just gonna snug it up ever so slightly just to get a little bit of resistance on there. And I'm gonna go to the front. So it looks like it's moving all over the place, but the screws were in there, not even hand, finger tight. So now they got a little bit of torque on there, but nothing crazy. Less than 10 inch pounds. And the scope did do a little bit of a dance, it looks like. Looks like we're about one mil over on the windage. And about 0.1 on the elevation, but that's fine. Now the real test comes when I torque these down. So I'm gonna start with the inside screw on the front end rear cap, rear, 15 inch pounds, front, 15 inch pounds, coming back to the rear outermost screw, 15 inch pounds, and lastly, to the forward most one, 15 inch pounds. And just for good luck, I'm gonna do it again. Same order, going from the inside, working my way out. And there we have it. So it's off 0.1 and about 0.1. So all in all, pretty good performance. Now, I I'm gonna learn from my mistake which, with uh, the guys at Super Precision I just did. I'm going to take this off, then put it back, then re-zero it and go from there. So, it wants to sit exactly where I had it. Pushing all the way forward like you would on any rifle to limit the mo possible movement of recoil. All right, that's pretty tight. My thumbs can't make it any better. And so far, so good. We're off to a very good start. Now, let me see if I can get the focus on this a little bit better. All right, that looks like it's going to be about as good as we're going to get. So, with that, let's take this off for our first official test and again I wish these thumb screws had a slot so I can just put a long screwdriver or a coin in there right now it's a real pain in the balls all right that should be enough taking it off putting it back exact same location on the rail and I'm going to be pushing forward and tightening these down as best as I can and this is the one thing about the mount that is less than stellar. But again, this is the only thing that's less than stellar. All right, those are tight. And as you can see, I don't see any real movement there. So I think I'm gonna do one more turn and remove it. Now, gotta go from screw to screw. So that it jacks off the lock evenly. Take it off completely, put it back on, there we go, and again, got to go back and forth with these screws while maintaining forward pressure, wiggle it back and forth a little bit, make sure it's not getting hung up on anything. My thumb is already hurting from this, but I can't envision you 
taking a mount like this off on and off as often as I'm doing it right now. A sacrifice for everybody out there, just so you know. Rear is tight and front is tight. And maybe it's favoring the left-hand side of the elevation line ever so slightly more. But I'm gonna say that's an absolute pass. And this setting the scope up in the mount is so easy on this, it's not even funny. But you know, you get you, you get what you pay for. I'm gonna say the Scalar works passes with flying colors. Alrighty, this is going to be the last mount in this video. This is my American Defense Recon, uh, again, with the SWFA 16X. Now, I don't have anything tight except for the mount on the rail. And we're going to be doing the exact same thing we've done with the other two, two mounts. I did not do it with the spur because I already had everything really nice and torqued down. Um, and, well, I already did that, so I'm not going to conclude with doing that anymore. Because I have a funny feeling that scope wouldn't move at all. But maybe if I get enough requests to do so, I will redo it. So right off the bat, we're pretty close. Now I'm going to test my theory about why I like this mount, or at least one of the reasons why I like this mount. I'm going to torque down the bottom two screws on both caps to 15 inch pounds, which again is pretty standard on most caps. Right now, I'm going to try to line this scope reticle up with my target as perfectly as I can. Try to tap it over. That looks pretty dang good. Again, I'm going to start with the innermost screw on both the rear and front caps. I'm just going to snug them up. Nothing crazy. That's the rear. This is the front. Alrighty, going back to the rear. And again, these are just snug, these are not torqued yet. And then to the front, farthest screw, and just snugged up again. So now I'm gonna go back to the bottom, make sure they're all torqued, 15 inch pounds, which they now are. I'm going to the top, starting with the inside screws first, 15, 15, 15 and 15 inch pounds and very little in the way of rotation which is excellent probably the best performance of the evening look at that flawless that's one of the reasons why i like this scope because i found that in my testings originally with this it's just so easy to get it lined up and torqued down and never have to worry about it because the design of how these clamshells work torque down the bottom, you snug up the top, torque them, they're done. But we are not out of the woods yet, oh no. I'm now going to remove the mount from the rail, which this being my technical, technically the, the first true quick release mount here today, uh, comes off with, with friggin' ease. Putting it back on, pushing forward, locking the front and then the rear, super easy and dead nuts perfect. Didn't even have to adjust anything. Gonna do this two more times, just for shits and giggles, starting with the rear and then the front, removing the scope completely, and then putting it back in place. Front, lock, rear, lock. Uh, yep, that looks, that looks perfect. Going again, rear and then front, removing it, Putting it back in place, pushing forward, farthest most clamp, then the rearward clamp. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The standout winner across these four mounts also happens to be the cheapest. It is the heaviest, uh, it is the widest as far as the throw levers go, but as far as repeatability, I don't think you're ever going to see better than what you just saw. And this is on a $200 mount. I am I'm floored. So there you have it. You have a $400, a $325, a $400, and a $200 mount. 
all of which with very similar results, all things considered. I was very surprised by how much movement there was with the Geisley when I was torquing down the caps. That reticle was literally moving all over the place. With the Scalar Works, with the way it's designed, it was super easy. Just It's just these four screws on this side, and there's no movement really to the scope whatsoever. The same thing with the American Defense. That's why I like this clamshell design. Torque these bottom two down, you get the top in, boom, done. The spur I did not do only because I didn't have the right size tool and it was already torqued down. But nevertheless, decent performance as far as resetting to zero, but the absolute standout is the American Defense. This is the cheapest here by at least 50%. The, the next closest is the Geisley at 325. This is about 200 bucks. And this thing, as you saw, reset to zero basically perfectly each and every time. I was completely blown away by that. So out of these four, which would I pick? Well, there's a couple of things that you have to take into consideration. One, do you want a quick release? This is the only real technical quick release. Yeah, the Scala Works has these thumb screws, but, but there are better ways of doing it. Yeah, it's, it's sleeker and it's narrower and it's lighter. But as far as the true quick release goes, the American Defense, at least in this sort of comparison, takes it. The guys are super precision for the money. I would look elsewhere. I really don't like the thumb screws, but that's all personal preference. The spur did a really good job, but this is designed to be permanently mounted, so it doesn't really matter if you take it on or off. You're probably going to set it, get it all good, and then forget about it. Would I go with these two? Honestly, no. I would go with this simply because the cool features that it has as far as the leveling it, the actual bubble level in the back, and all the other cool features that you can have with this, as long as it was part of a permanently set up rig. But the, this thing... For 200 bucks, if you have an AR that you're running a red dot on or something, or an LPVO, and you wanted the ability to go really far out with it, you take this, and you could take, well, here's the scope that I was using for the review, an SWFA 16X, or 10X, whatever power you want, and you have yourself a $500 combination that you know you can zero out, get it all perfect, figure out your dope, pull it off your gun, put it in your backpack, put back on your LPVO or your red dot, and then you're like, hmm, you know what? I want to shoot this gun a little bit farther today. Or if you needed to for whatever event that you might might be going on, you literally take off the red dot, you put this back on, and you know it's going to be basically perfect. Dead on, dead nuts perfect. The second you bolt this on, you're good to go. So this is my standout winner and favorite amongst these fours, bar none. Anyway... That concludes this exceptionally long video. Thank you very much for being patient with this one. Again, this is the last time I'm going to be doing a head-to-head-to-head -head -to -head like this probably ever again, but say la vie. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See you again next time. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you, this wouldn't be possible.